voted, you bickered, you talked about hair dryers and goo gone, the quandary about how to remove an old lifeboat diagram sticker that some of you petitioned to have a stay of execution for has been the talk of YouTube. This is how I vanquished my informational foe, the so-called caramel wheel, a rubber drill attachment that seems to use heat and friction to forcibly rip up both the sticker and the adhesive. It creates a mess as the loose waste is sticky and so it covers the wall, drill, your clothes in deceased sticker. In the end I was left with some adhesive left on the gel coat and this needed a combination of more friction, some acetone and a chisel to clean up. The end result was success, some light burn marks, a smell of hot rubber and a lot of hoovering to do. Okay on to today's episode which is about tubes. Alan hasn't had diesel flowing through him for quite a while and this isn't great for diesel engines so I'm impatient to get all the fuel line work done. This is a bracket I'm making for a ball shutoff valve that's going to be on the supply direction hose from the fuel tank to the water separator and then to the engine. First I'm attaching these plumbing clips to a stainless bracket. They're from the Talon range and instead of the normal polypropylene ones I've gone for the more robust polyethylene. Here you're enjoying a view of concurrent use of an Allen key and a spatter. Remember this when commenting and liking. The clips weren't quite the right shape for the ball valve I bought and so some editing was needed. I brought out the Dremel to shape the plastic and make sure it wouldn't jam the valve handle once installed. It was then a case of quickly constructing the valve assembly which is just the valve itself and two 8mm hose tails with copper washers. They weren't crushable washers but a careful spanner tightening should create a good seal. We'll find out. Ok so I thought about cutting most of this out but in the process of making cutting edge customised parts sometimes square pegs need to be forced into round holes. Eventually I triumphed and the ball valve ended up mounted to the bracket. An angle grinder is necessary. Always. But here it actually was. The stainless brackets come with very sharp corners so I smoothed them off in order to stave off the comment section derision that's convinced anything on board not shaped into a perfect curve is going to lead to gruesome injuries. Ok but seriously they probably will so I, I took off the worst of the corners if only to limit the ability to snag on things. Right it's a bracket with a valve mounted on it so we shouldn't get too excited. I screwed it into the fiberglass panel to the side of the engine and clear of the area where the battery box is due to be. This means it will reside outside of the engine cowling, can't be accidentally flipped but can be grabbed fast in an emergency. I've used hose tail attachments as they are pretty flexible and with jubilee clips should create a decent seal. Purists might get all excited and some will always advocate for rigid copper fuel lines and screw fittings but I'm keeping a principle of simple maintenance running through all my decisions. To run the fuel hoses from the fuel tank to the water separator and then the engine plus the diesel return fuel line back to the tank I've used more of these talon clips located along the side of the engine bay. Reassuringly when I drilled down into the fiberglass that also has the four engine mount feet embedded I found a steel plate within it so clearly anything locked into there is going to be pretty solid. I've placed the water separator and fuel filter in the engine bay itself and in a spot I can get at but where it's not going to get knocked or damaged. I've used hose tails again with copper sealing washers as I'm assured they're superior to fabric or rubber ones. Following the instructions I use the ports as prescribed but I'm intrigued about the other two ports that are blanked off. Anyone know what they're for? I'm assuming it's for a double tank system or even water separation for the return journey of the unspent fuel back to the tank. Right, now to actually connecting everything up. First I'm doing the fuel supply routing. To recap, from the tank via the ball valve, then a fuel separator and finally into the fuel inlet to the engine which has a fine fuel filter built in. To adapt the screw fittings to the hoses I have a simple fitting with nitrile washer seals. What you'll actually find in a future video is that these have turned out to be hopeless and I'm going to completely change that system altogether but I had already filmed this and anyhow so you can disregard these, um, these blue adapters that you can see here. They were designed for the motor racing industry and they appeared ideal for this application but they're not. Usually I do double jubilee clips as this is recommended best practice but here the hose tails aren't quite long enough so one will have to do but as I said this is going to be changed anyhow. Finally I could feed the fuel hoses through all the clips via the most common sense route forward and out of the engine bay area. The fuel hoses have a minimum radius they are rated to be able to handle as they are flexed and bent around corners. 
Earlier I had taken a spare short length and tested this, and sure enough I heard a cracking sound. Whilst I suspect this isn't fatal, it was probably the two layers of rubber separating. The fuel facing inner tube and the abrasion resistant outer tube. I thought it was asking for trouble to push this too far, so I aimed for as loose a curve as I could manage as I routed the hoses. There's a fiberglass wall that will make a lot more sense later on, that I needed to drill through with a force in a bit, and then it could be connected and clipped to the ball valve assembly. The hose used in the engine bay is standard rubber, but for the sections where they are more likely to be exposed to damage and abrasion, I have sections of stainless braided rubber hose. All of it is 8mm in a diameter. In order to get both of the hoses, one the supply line and the other the return line, to the racking area where the main fuel tank is to be mounted, they need to cross the fiberglass walkway. I considered tunnelling through, but decided it would create vast amounts of work and offer practically no functional advantage. So here I've put together a conduit using steel channel. It's been bonded to a well prepped section of gel coat using two of the adhesives featured in episode 5. Sticks like Alan! for the main bond and then edged with CT1. I'll add some material either side in due course to avoid this becoming a trip hazard. The next job will be to get the engine fired up once again, and so I'm hoping that my repairs and improvements haven't got in the way of what was already a perfectly functional little turbo diesel. So I'm just going to share one little tip that I came up with, or rather didn't really come up with, I accidentally found it out. I left out one of these, um, one of these rolls of, of blue rag, this uh, blue paper towel, which I guess everyone's fairly familiar with that you use for just basic cheap wiping down, cleaning and all sorts of things within, uh, within the boat. And uh, I'm sure those of you who have ever cleaned anything would have come across some blue roll. Now I left it out in the rain and it got sodden wet. And I thought, well, it's probably all gonna disintegrate now and I might as well think about chucking it out. But I didn't, I left it overnight. In fact, I think I forgot to throw it out. And then I found out in the morning that it hadn't disintegrated at all. It was still in, all in one piece. And it meant that I had a, an extremely long roll of damp, uh, of damp blue rag. So now I have a dry one and a wet one. And the good thing about this is obviously that was rainwater, that wasn't water from the tap, so it won't contain all of the minerals and potential other bits and bobs that you get in, in tap water. So it's actually a really useful um, damp roll that I can now wipe things down with if I need sort of a, a, a bit of dampness, but not necessarily a sodden wet microfiber cloth or something like that. So sometimes making a, a, an error, it could have just been uh, thrown in the bin, it's turned out to be quite a new technique. So occasionally now I actually leave a new roll of this blue stuff out in the rain. Today, after quite a few months of the engine being completely disconnected from everything around it and, uh, and basically being a source of work itself, it's now more or less good to go. And I'm looking forward to basically connecting everything back up again. Next will be the, will be the electrics, but that's a job for later on. Uh, but all the main piping and hosing, hosing is now back in place. And hopefully that's shown you a nice uh, example of how I've tried to neaten up the whole system uh, have everything, everything very accessible and have it ready for the next set of sea trials because last time round it was very much a case of just hoses all over the place stuck into random fuel tanks and all that sort of thing uh, it was simply just so that we, we could have the engine running this time obviously I'm trying to put things together properly uh, so that we have a, a really robust fuel supply system uh, and one that can be got at in particular if, if there's any problems because the last thing I want is important uh, fittings and fixtures sort of buried around underneath things because that it says to me bad design it's a good idea to have everything grabbable particularly those things which have a safety aspect for instance the the fuel shutoff valve i'm offering you a little extra bonus on this episode focusing on the outer components of the turbocharger itself turbos get very hot so the inlet area although it wouldn't be the worst zone in terms of heat needed proper treatment the metal fitting had corroded quite badly, which stood out on the otherwise very new looking engine, so I prepped it back to a good surface and then used the high temperature rated black paint. Cosmetic really, but worth it I think. There we go, something on Allen that's actually been done for form over function. Forward your complaints at your leisure. Bye.